CoffeeScript is a nice little language that compiles into JavaScript and is included in Rails 3.1, so I highly recommend you give it a try and get familiar with it because you'll be seeing it a lot in future Rails applications. Now, a great place to start is the CoffeeScript website, which you can uh, see a lot of examples here of various CoffeeScript features, and it includes the compiled JavaScript right on the side here, so you can see exactly what it's doing underneath. And you can also try CoffeeScript right here in the browser. So you could insert any CoffeeScript code in here, such as uh, we'll try a range list here. And notice that it outputs this JavaScript. And you can click on Run to execute that CoffeeScript as well. Pretty awesome because this runs all in the browser. It's not doing any AJAX in the background. It's just all client-side JavaScript. Now, a great way to learn CoffeeScript is to take some of your existing JavaScript code and convert it over. So that's what I'll be walking you through in this episode. We'll take this JavaScript code here and turn it into CoffeeScript. Now that JavaScript code you saw does some basic credit card number validation using mod 10. And you can see it in action here where we have an order form or with a credit card number field. And if I type in an obviously wrong credit card number, it says it's invalid. But if I type in one that looks correct, the validation error goes away. So that's some quick credit card number validation we can do through JavaScript, and it'll be a great exercise in using CoffeeScript. By the way, the Rails version I'm using here is 3.1 Release Candidate 1, which was just announced. So be sure to upgrade to that latest version. All right, so let's get started here. To change a JavaScript file over to CoffeeScript, you just have to append .coffee to it. So if you leave it at .js, uh, you can use plain JavaScript here as well. CoffeeScript is completely optional. Now, as you can see down here, it recognizes the CoffeeScript language because I have a TextMate bundle installed, which I'll link to in the show notes if you're interested in that. Now, the first step here is just to comment out all of our JavaScript code because we'll change it one piece at a time to CoffeeScript. So let's start off with these first few lines here where we are creating a credit card object and then giving it this clean number function which basically just cleans up a given credit card number a little. Now in CoffeeScript, you can remove a lot of syntax, such as curly braces. So that's a good place to start, just strip out some of those curly braces. Now, because we stripped out curly braces, CoffeeScript uses uh, tabs, basically, to define as block level. So make sure you're using consistent tabs. Uh, I just use two spaces for each one but just make sure that whatever you use is consistent because it has syntactic white space. Now, another thing we can remove is the var call here. So we can just remove var because that's a needed in CoffeeScript. Now we can also remove any return statements which are at the end of a function because those are now implicit. It'll automatically return whatever is at the end of a function call, just like Ruby. And of course, we can get rid of our dreaded semicolons at the end of each line in JavaScript. Now you can also remove parentheses around function calls if you want to. So this replace call here, we can remove these parentheses similar to how it works in Ruby. However, one big difference is that if there aren't any arguments here, then you have to have the parentheses in order for it to recognize it that you're trying to call a function. But we have arguments here, so we can remove the parentheses. And then finally, we have to change this function definition here. So to convert this to CoffeeScript, what you have to do is just remove the word function and then add a dash greater than symbol at the end of the, any arguments which are passed into the function. Now this takes some getting used to at first, but it's pretty uh, concise and a nice way to define functions in CoffeeScript. And we can try building this and see that this is what the JavaScript looks like that it will generate. Uh, it looks quite a bit like what we originally had, except now it's a lot more concise because we're using CoffeeScript. Now it's even possible to place function definitions all on one line, which is pretty nice when they're short like this. So that compiles to the same thing as you can see here. All right, now let's work on converting this big function over. So we'll just basically follow the same steps here, starting with our curly braces. We'll just clean up the syntax. We can remove any semicolons as well. Just strip all this extra syntax out of here. And that's looking good. We can remove, remove any return statements that are at the end of the function. We can remove any var calls here, just like this. And then the function definition here, take out the word function 
and then at the end, add a dash greater than sign. There we go. Now there are still a number of things we need to change here, starting with the this keyword. If you ever see this, you can replace it with an at, an at sign. So we could replace this dot with an at symbol, and that will basically do the same thing. Now another thing we'll need to change is this for loop here, because iterations are quite a bit different in CoffeeScript. But I'm actually going to leave this for now and come back to it in a little bit. Something else that we need to change is the if statement here, because we just need to remove the outer parentheses, because those are no longer used in CoffeeScript. So just remove those outer parentheses. Another thing to change is a ternary operator here, because notice uh, we're changing behavior with the question mark and colon, basically doing an if else statement here in line. Uh, ternary operators you basically change to if else statements. So in this case you say if this given condition, and you change the question mark to then, and change a colon to else. And that does the same thing as that ternary operator. So the rest of this is looking pretty good, so all we need to change now is this for loop here. First, let me show you some examples here on how for loops work in CoffeeScript. So what we could do is write for number in one, two, three. So that means for each item in that array is going to be passed in this block as that number. So we can say alert number, and that means if we run this code, it'll alert each of those separate numbers. Now another way you might see this written is like this, where you have the block basically before it, and then you just have the for statement after it on the same line, and that will do the exact same thing. But let's stick with this approach for now. Now another thing we could do here is use a range instead of a simple array. So to do this, it's similar to Ruby, where we just uh, use two periods there, and notice it simplified the JavaScript quite a bit, but it still has the same effect of our counting. And we can even reverse this, so it's three to one, and then it will count downwards. And that's basically the technique we wanna use to count down in our code. So back in our JavaScript code, we now know how to update this for loop here because we're doing a simple countdown. So what we're doing is starting with number length minus one, and then counting down till it's zero. So to change this, we wanna say for i inside of number length minus one, counting down to zero, and that's it. That should work. Uh, we might wanna wrap this in parentheses just to ensure it has the right precedence. There we go. We can try building this, and it looks good. There's our JavaScript from our CoffeeScript. CoffeeScript, I think, is quite a bit cleaner. Might take some getting used to, but I like it. Now let's move on to our last bit of code, which is right here. And this is just basically some jQuery to get everything all hooked up in the browser. Now, you don't have to do anything special with jQuery and CoffeeScript because CoffeeScript is just JavaScript underneath. Uh, you can use jQuery just like normal. So let's convert this just like before, where we remove the extra syntax. We have our if else statement. We can remove those outer parentheses on our if call, remove those curly braces, and remove some more parentheses because those are optional on our function calls. And we can convert this period to, with the, to a uh, at symbol there. And then lastly, we just have our function definitions here, like this one. And if you aren't ever passing arguments through the function, like there's no arguments being passed in here, then you can just replace the entire thing with dash greater than. So we can do that to both of these. Really nice and clean. And that's really all there is to it to convert this to CoffeeScript. Now there is one more change I like to make here when you're using jQuery. Uh, this dollar sign function, I like to change it to jQuery. It basically does the same thing, but this just makes it obvious that yes, we're using jQuery in this section here, and that way it'll just call this when it loads the DOM. And we can try building our script, and it looks like it works. Code looks good, let's try it. So let's reload the page in the browser here and try typing an invalid credit card number, and it works. There's our error message. I type in a valid one, and that works as well. The error message disappeared. So if we take a look at the JavaScript, we can see at the very bottom of this file here that there's our generated CoffeeScript. So it compiled it all for us, 
and put it here already. Now what happens if we ever have a syntax error in our coffee script? Well, let me try breaking the script really quick, removing that. And we can try reloading the browser here. And we won't see the error here because the JavaScript request is separate. But if we check out the JavaScript console, we can see that, well, right here, it tells us that there's a parse error on line four of the CoffeeScript file. So that's really great. It tells you the exact line and parse error, uh, just as if you uh, had an error in your JavaScript, but it tells you exactly where it was in your CoffeeScript. So that's a really great feature uh, to be able to easily see where the syntax errors are. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this quick look into CoffeeScript. But there's a lot I didn't cover, though, so I recommend you check out the site for the full documentation. It's a fun little language, and I definitely look forward to using it more in the future.